Hello, welcome to this video about the eclipses. It's eclipses town, uh, time, time during April 2014 and I'm going to explain a little bit what the flavor is and what is the energy uh, around these eclipses. And there's two eclipses. On the 15th of April there's an eclipse in Libra and um, to be specific it's on 25 degrees of Libra it's a lunar eclipse so the moon will be in Libra and the sun will be in Aries in opposition and then the 29th of April um, there is a solar eclipse the sun and the moon together in the sign of Taurus at around 8 9 degrees so these are the eclipses as I explain in my other video, and I will put a link uh, below this, there is something about the eclipses that is called the Saros family eclipse. Now, um, this is a very technical thing, and if you, if you are interested to know about, about that a bit more in detail, go and look at the uh, video below, because that explains why eclipses are not uh, randomly so an eclipse that happens always belongs to a certain family of eclipses and um, so also these eclipses they belong to a certain family and why is that so important because if you want to give meaning to a certain eclipse and give an interpretation of what the energy is all about you need to have to go back to the first uh, eclipse that happened in that whole series to know what it's all about. So, um, and someone I always refer to who is very, um, who has done a lot of research is Bernadette Brady. She has a book and she describes for every eclipse belongs to a certain Saros family eclipse and that has a certain meaning. So now I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to make this video of the two eclipses and I, I emphasize the lunar eclipse because it's a more challenging one I think. That's why I'm going to uh, take a bit more time about that one. The Taurus uh, eclipse is a bit different from energy. But both of these eclipses belong to families that had a certain uh, energy. And what is this energy about? So now I'm not even talking about uh, the constellation of planets that are there at the 15th of April or at the 29th of April. No, I'm talking about the first eclipse of that series, which was long, 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 long time ago. And looking at the chart, what it was saying. And what it was saying was what I've said in all the monthly horoscopes of the videos. Don't jump the conclusions. That's the energy of um, these original eclipses for both of them. It's about information, it's about new ideas and it's about impulse, impulsiveness. So it's about information that comes our way that could be quite impulsive, that is actually quite impulsive and therefore um, the advice of don't jump the conclusions. But I want to add something to this. If I say don't jump the conclusions, I don't mean to exclude the fact that intuition is always wrong. On the, on the contrary, we all make our decisions based on what we have in our chart. If you only look at the elements, if we are a very uh, airy, um, if we have a very airy or horoscope with a lot of planets in air signs like Libra and Aquarius and uh, Gemini, we make our decisions of facts and we use our mind to make a decision. If you are someone who's got a lot of planets in, in water signs, it's your feelings who are your, who, who is your guide to make conclusions and decisions. So and so on. When it's in a fiery sign, it's very, uh, it, it's intuitive. It's, it comes in, uh, the information is, is about knowledge, it's about, it comes in as, as intuition. And when it's, what, what did I, didn't I have then? 
if it's in the earth science, there needs to be experience, there needs to be proof uh, um, that, you, that is tangible in order for making a decision. Now, why is this so important? Because this is a, a flavor of impulsiveness and of uh, insights. And a lot of people, if insights come suddenly and you act on it, a lot of people would say that's not a good thing. You should not be impulsive. But every now and then it is a good thing because our insights that come from uh, our intuition can be correct as well. So it makes me think a lot about the, sire, uh, the sign of Aries and uh, with the lunar eclipse Aries is involved. So it's not always the truth that Aries people who are, who've got planets there who are always said to be too impulsive, that that will be a bad thing. Not necessarily, but in many cases it is. It is. It is a, a bad case if you jump into the water and then you, you realize, oh, I'm all wet all over. So, um, but at times we have to react almost without uh, um, taking our time because we are in a critical situation therefore errors can be very very uh, courageous and can be very useful so it depends upon in your life what your situation is and um, so for people who have a nature of impulsiveness so who have maybe some planets in in fire signs or rising signs so for people who are quite you know um a bit um, they don't have a lot of patience for people like that it's it's uh, the advice of be cautious be cautious because you may do things that you would rather regret afterwards but there are also people who are not like that you've got also people who are more of the Saturnian or Saturn like people who are very cautious but who are to the other extreme they are stuck because they think too much or they are stuck because they are worried too much because there's too much fear and for these people these eclipses can give you a, it can be actually a very good thing because it frees you up now um, so the main thing about this energy is okay ideas that can come into very fast but um, you have to be sure that if you, you do actions after that information that comes in that you don't go too fast don't jump the conclusions especially for those who are and who have an impulsive nature so that's the um the explanation now if we look at the chart of the lunar eclipse itself the thing that strikes me the most is that at that day the 15th of april mercury conjuncts uranus so this is a trigger um it, it is the it, it triggers um, the eclipse, it triggers the full square that is going on and this is also actually a bit the same as the original eclipse because it's also about Mercury which is thoughts, information coming our way and Uranus, the very unusual planet, the planet that wants um, drastic changes, wants to reform, wants to liberate, wants to individualize. So these two energies together is very nervous energy. And of course, if you don't have any planets in Aries, in Libra, in Cancer, in Capricorn, you won't feel that um, in such a way. But if you've got planets, or don't forget the, the progress planets, so planets in, in your progression, if they reach between 20 and 30 degrees of those four signs I just mentioned, then you are going to uh, feel this energy the most. And you will, um, some information will get to you um, that prompts you into this unusual uh, information and maybe a sort of a wake up call. Um, that can be for the better or for worse. So um, Uranus is always uh, associated with uh, detachment. And um, so Uranus is, it, it sees like, or it is rather like 
that some information will come our, our way and some people will detach themselves from situations, from other people, from whatever, but only if they have been in a situation for a long time where they have been stuck and where they have had the feeling of being enchained almost. That is what Uranus always does. Um, it only uh, detaches you when you feel trapped. So everyone in a natal chart who has a connection with Uranus, like a sun conjunct Uranus or a moon squaring up to Uranus, or so people who have this Uranus in their birth charts, they have that in their lives that sometimes when they feel trapped and when they feel they have no liberation at all um, towards a certain situation or people or whatever, they detach themselves from it because it, it, it is too much for them. So, um, funnily enough, these people are, tra are reformers in other people's lives, but they have a bit of a challenge to reform themselves every now and then because they tend to wait too long. And if you wait too long, if you build up that energy of, I know this is not good, but I, I, I can't get out of the situation, then of course something has to happen, mostly out of the blue, and then the detachment comes. What I'm trying to say here is that for all of us, it is a time where we have situations like that. And if we do, it is a time to be aware of it, to detect it, um, and it is a time of uh, understanding why you feel that eager to detach yourself. So it, it, it's a good time to um, understand that. And in the monthlies, I will, uh, I will explain um, the typical uh, in the house situation, so the area of life uh, it is confrontational. Uh, so um, it always tries to open up things. So, um, but sometimes people experience it in a, in a bad way because there is so much resistance. If there is less resistance and an understanding of certain things that need to change, this energy can just be a bit of an um, a, a, a accelerator to fasten the situation towards the level that you want it to. So it's, it's definitely, I always find Uranus uh, in, in a conjunction to Mercury and actually in transits as well. You have to take them with, with caution, especially when you have an impulsive nature. But for people who have been stuck for a long time, if you are someone who says, you know, I'm in this relationship and it's not going well, or I'm at this job and it's not going well, it can be just the thing that you need. So, uh, because it it's, it's, uh, obliges you, it almost, um, uh, y y there's no other way as going forwards and taking action and doing something about your situation. So for people who, who haven't got the courage, it can be a very courageous time. So it is different for everyone. And, uh, but in general, this is the most important thing that I wanted to say about this, um, uh, this lunar eclipse. So especially if you've got planets around that uh, degree, uh, take your time to, you, you have this, I do these videos quite early because eclipses tend to, you know, you feel them already a couple of weeks before. Now, um, so yes, it is an eclipse with very nervous energy, but if you understand and are aware of what is happening, it can help you to improve your situation, whatever uh, the situation is that you want to change it. And liberating yourself can be the case as well. Now, what, what about the other eclipse, which I'm not going into too much. The other eclipse is a Taurus uh, eclipse, so the sun and the moon are conjuncting each other in Taurus. And actually the only thing that I think is quite in interesting as well is that Mercury uh, is conjuncting that eclipse. So again, it's um, it's about information coming our way, but uh, and it's happening at the 29th of uh, April. So whatever happens with that lunar eclipse, it seems to me that the Taurian eclipse is going to uh, calm things down, which is good. 
and it's like saying back to reality, down to earth, whatever it is that has blown your mind, perhaps. Maybe it's a, a surprise, the information that comes to you and that you really like. I mean, it's, it's impossible to say in general. Uh, you really have to, um, if you really want to, to know about this more, I really have to look into your um, personal uh, horoscope. And then you can, of course, uh, order a reading to do that. But um, the solar eclipse in Taurus is very much about like a very earthly energy and sort of new beginning because that's the eclipse of um, a, a sun and a moon together. It's new beginnings. And um, the people who are going to feel that the most, again, look at your progressions as well, is people who've got planets around 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 degrees of Taurus, of Scorpio, of Leo and of Aquarius. And this is more energy that um, has not that erratic flavor and not that impulsive nature. Although it is also about information coming your way and you decide what you do with it. Because it's Mercury, the planet of giving the message, giving the information that is conjuncting that uh, solar eclipse. So there's information coming your way, but there's also a st stabilizing effect of the thoughts and a more going, uh, being more earthly about your thoughts and therefore make a new beginning for whatever this eclipse is falling into your house. So for instance, um, well, no, I'm not going to into the, the houses because you can see that in the monthly horoscopes. I think I forgot Virgo and Pisces about the solar eclipse. So um, I forgot, I, I always start with those two signs and I work with oppositions. And I think I forgot to mention what the solar eclipse was about. Now for Virgos, it's really, really nice because it's the... Um, uh, it, it's a trine with your um, with your sign, so so it's very nice, and it's in the ninth house, which is all about understanding on a higher level. For the Pisces, it's also about understanding, but on a more day to day level. So for these both signs, these solar eclipses that are happening, um, it's a lot about their thoughts and their ideas calming down and also understanding now really really good now we, I, I stress the, the word real because it's very tangible whatever it was that was really um, not very uh, uh, easy to grasp and also about the third and ninth house is also about studying maybe some Virgos are going to start new studies or Pisces maybe as well because it's that those, those study houses, those understanding houses. So new beginnings there and endings as well. So I hope this was a bit informative, those eclipses. But remember, it is not for everyone as important. It's always important when it is um, aspecting a certain planet in your chart and especially uh, axis. So the ascendant to the descendant or the uh, mid-heaven to the IC. Thank you for listening. Wish you all the best and the best of luck for this uh, eclipse um, during the month of April. And let the information come in, even when it's a bit shocking or, 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 di di or disturbing, but take your time to make your actions um, after that information has come in. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.